Hey guys, how are you today? Today we are going to be looking at the Grave Creek Mounds here in Moundsville, West Virginia. And as you can see right here behind me is that mound. Um, we're at 801 Jefferson Avenue, Moundsville, West Virginia. So the Grave Creek Mounds um, are here in Ohio Valley, it's near West Virginia, actually in West Virginia, near Ohio Valley, um, is one of the largest burial mounds in the USA, uh, standing 62 feet tall and 240 foot in diameter. Builders of the site were members of the Adena tribe. That was a local tribe that was actually here in this area. Um, it took more than 60,000 tons of dirt to create it in around 250 to 150 BC during the woodland time period with, when only baskets were used and did not have any wheel technology. So they actually had to carry the dirt by basket from location that they retrieved it to actually bring it here and dump it. This is one of the largest mounds that was ever discovered. And what I'll do is I'll actually put a link in the description um, and put all the information on a blog post so you can actually go there and review all the information about the mound. So they actually allow you to walk up the mound. Uh, they have a pathway that goes up around the side here which you can actually see. So we're going to go ahead and walk up that that path. Something that I find to be very interesting about these mounds um, you can read all over the internet about people that have discovered these mounds and the original excavations and what they found. You know, there's a lot of conspiracy theories about the Smithsonian trying to cover up um, what they actually found under these mounds. But they were finding giants in these mounds that were upwards of eight foot tall and some were even taller. As you can see, we continue to walk up. We're probably halfway up the mound now. That's the Moundsville State Penitentiary there. That's the actual complex where all the artifacts are housed. So you can see so getting back to the the giant bones that were found in here they were found in almost all the mounds throughout the US and some Canada and other ones through the world and as we know uh, the Indians would worship what they believed to be gods and these were very large people. Like I said, between seven and a half to 10 feet tall. So for them to create a burial site in this area and do it all by hand to bury people in this mound. And to date, they said they've only found maybe 
a dozen um, skeletons. But to me, to build something this big, I mean, this is an aerial shot from the top. So for them to want to and have to <laughs> build something this tall over the course of what they believe to be 100 years, there has to be something more significant here than just to bury a dozen bones, skeletons, people, people of their tribe. So, in my opinion, and from what I'm reading online, this is how steep incline is, they have found huge bones. I read one article that said that from this mound, they unearthed one giant skeleton they led to believe was a female and her head alone the size of the head that came out of this burial tomb was big enough that you could have fit an, an Indian whole set of bones inside that skull alone so if you was to have sorry there's an e-squad going by if you were to have an Indian skeleton and you was to put it in a fetal position, that skeleton would fit inside of this large head of this giant, as we're going to call it for lack of better terms. And giants have been recorded throughout history, uh, obviously in the Bible, but there's tons of accounts in the Greek mythology. Uh, there's also tons of accounts in the Adena culture, the other Indian cultures of these giants that would come visit them and they worship them. So, I'll leave it up to you guys to decide what you think this was, but I find it very hard to believe with all the irrefutable facts and diaries and documentaries of all the information that was recorded could really be just for a dozen Indian skeletons, bones, burial site. And this site has been so corrupted by, it was a bar at one time, a nightclub, um, they had festivals in here, they had tons of activities going on over the years. They just recently, I think in like the 60s, which I'll put all the information in a link that you can go to and research and read about all this because I'm not sure I have all my facts straight, but it's been so corrupted of a site. There is really no way to know what was taken out of here, what was really seen, when, uh, what was true, what was false. Of course, you have all the Smithsonian cover-up allegedly going on with trying to keep the people uh, you know at bay at what's really in and going on so my thought process is it would take a lot of explaining from the scientific community to explain where all these giants come from you know in Canada there's actually called um, a graveyard of giants which they unearthed over a hundred of these giants from the ground there um, I thought that was very interesting, but you can see the mound as we're going down the pathway that was carved here, and you can see how far up it really is. So, you know, they had built this mound by hand in baskets of dirt, bringing it to and from, because there was no wheeled... They didn't have wheeled technology then, so they couldn't just load up wheelbarrows or, you know, put a bunch of dirt on a cart and have horses or oxen to drive it here. They had to do it all by hand. So something as labor intensive, which takes me back to the pyramids of Egypt, 
they did this for more than just burial. It doesn't even make logical sense to do it. I've also read a lot of reports online about almost at every site that they have discovered these mounds or uh, large skeletons, giants for lack of better terms, they have also, um, there's always so a lot of paranormal activity associated with those areas. So is there a correlation there? I don't know. I can tell you that the prison, Moundsville State Penitentiary Prison, which is just right across the road from here, is probably one of the most paranormal active places in this area. And it's right beside this mound. And you can just do some research and be able to actually find a lot of those details for yourself about the different areas how the paranormal is associated with it is it coincidental i don't believe in coincidences so for me personally i would say it's not coincidental i'm going to walk around the side here there are some other little buildings that are here on the property I'm not sure what they are or what they were for we'll walk over and find out and see if they have any information on them so on the other side of the mound there's this stone structure can't get inside they have it all boarded up not a hundred percent sure what its story is and there's also another one back there in the distance I'm not sure what that one's for but let's go ahead and walk inside here and I'll take some video and some information about what's actually inside the complex. So inside the complex they have a lot of artifacts that they have set up. A lot of it is Indian based artifacts. some of the first homes in West Virginia. So they have a little Indian exhibit set up here just to kind of show what it was like to hunt in that time period. So here's a little picture showing how they would have carried the dirt to the mound in baskets and bags. This is a little display of the mound of what it might have looked like back in those days when it Indians actually lived here. I think it's interesting that they say what the contents of the upper vault was. So if you look at this diagram here you can see 
that this is the upper vault, and then this would have been the lower vault. But if you look here, it says one skeleton, all the stuff, and then the second vault said it had two skeletons. So I stand corrected when I said a dozen, it's actually only three skeletons. But that makes it even more of a contrast. That's a lot of work to do for three skeletons. And it doesn't say the size of the skeletons either. It's stating there that there were thousands of bones and the mound was actually created on top of it. But inside the mound was only the three skeletons. So these are the types of burials that they would have performed. This is actually really interesting. It says, why was the build, the mound built? Um, began usually with the death of a very important person, perhaps the leader of the region or a powerful priest or shaman. Could that powerful leader have been those giants? They've covered up. So they have a tree in here that actually represents the tree rings on different times of when things happen. Cool. So the Titanic scene is 1912. So each of the rings represent a time in history. Albert Einstein dies. First test tube baby born 1978, 1980, burning wall dismantled, and then of course 2002, terrorist attacks, World Trade Center, Pentagon. It's pretty cool how they've dissected that timeline based on the rings of the tree. And so guys, I leave you with your thoughts on whether or not you think, you know, there were giants there. Um, I'll have a link in the video description below that you could actually go to and do some of the research that I did as well. Um, but that's all I got for you guys today. Hope you enjoy it. Please remember to like, subscribe, and give us comments. I try to answer every comment that you send in. And guys, from here in Moundsville, West Virginia, at the Grave Creek Mounds, I say vlog over.